now. St. Pat's uh, provided heroics in Europe last night by being the Slovenian side Mora, who beat Spurs in the group stage of the Conference League last year. They won on penalties in Slovenia. It was a remarkable finish to the game. So I'd say we are joined now by former Pats winger Conan Byrne, who was on commentary alongside Oshin Langan on LOI TV as well. Conan, how are you getting on this morning? Not too bad, Will. How are you yourself and Ashling Ashling doing? Yeah, look, we're, we're great because, I mean, it's been a morning to celebrate uh, what's happened in the League of Ireland this week. Uh, we were talking to the boys from Sligo earlier. The Pats lads are on their way back. We believe they're on a train at the moment to Vienna. So a uh, tricky enough trip back from Slovenia, but they won't mind that too much after what was a remarkably dramatic way to win in the end and a fantastic performance by their own lone goalkeeper as well. Yeah, it was just a, a crazy game. Um I think a lot of people expected them not to do as well as they did, especially not to go through anyway. Um, but after the first leg, there was a lot of hope and expectation within the group itself that they could go over to Slovenia and put on a good performance. Um, and they did that in spades. They were absolutely superb from minute one to minute 121. Um, as you mentioned, Joe Anang in, in goal was fabulous. He made three or four world-class saves, in particular in extra time from a shot from Michael Kleepak on the edge of the box. I don't know how he got to it. A, a remarkable save. It reminded me of Gavin Bazunu's save in, against Portugal um, from outside the box that time. But it was just, as I said, from every every player on the pitch, even the substitutes that came on, it was just a remarkable performance. And Tim Clancy and the backroom team would be very proud of each and every one of its players. Yeah, like plenty of nervy moments. I think back even to the 25th minute, the first of those really good saves. Daku gets in behind. Uh, Pats don't hold the line particularly well. And then again, it's just like a point-blank save, which probably should have been scored, but a remarkably good save. Yeah, obviously, Daku, given his experience at Kosovo International, you're expecting him 1v1 to, to slot at home. But and Ang stayed big and, and got a great right hand to it. But just before that, Will, Barry Cotter had a wonderful chance to put Pats into the lead from a corner kick. Joe Redmond got a touch on it and he was three yards out. Nobody, to, it was harder to miss and um, he skied it over the bar with his head when he was easier to score. So, yeah, there was, I, th- I think Pats created the more dangerous chances. However, Joe and Ang, the unknown goalkeeper from West Ham United, he definitely earned his, uh, his wages this week. Yeah, Pats carried a threat. Like there was a ball that flashed across goal, which Owen Doyle nearly got to as well. It wasn't like Pats didn't fashion plenty of chances in Slovenia last night. Absolutely not. And they created a lot of chances themselves in Dublin the previous week. And I think we've got to remember Muir have, hadn't conceded uh, or had conceded every a goal in every game over the last 15. It's the first time they haven't conceded a goal in the game was last night. Um, and funny enough, they got knocked out for it. But yeah, they created chances. Chances you mentioned Serge Atakai there. He came off the bench. He just come in from from the Finnish league, where the assistant manager Jonathan Daly has been working over the last number of years. So they brought him in. He came off the bench. He, his decision making wasn't great on the night. If I'm being completely brut- brutally honest about it, um, he got into very dangerous positions and final ball and and final strike weren't weren't what they should be at that level. But having said that, he got into the areas and he probably should have squared the, the chance you're talking about. He had a great opportunity just to square the ball to Owen Doyle for a simple tap-in. He went for goal and it just went wide. But as I said, against a, a team that were in the Europa Conference League last year, coming up beating Spurs, um, it, everybody was expecting them. And probably themselves as well, Will, were expecting them, them to go through. And um, Pat showed that with a bit of heart, a bit of determination, a bit of luck as well. But things can go away, can go the Irish way as well. Yeah, because I think that was very much the feeling coming out of the first leg at Richmond a couple of weeks ago. Was that you know Chris Forrester's goal had given Pat's genuine hope that they could go to Slovenia and potentially get a result. But most people, I think, would have expected it was going to be a difficult night for Pat's. Like this is coming up against a team with reasonable, as you say, recent European pedigree as well, and knocking them out. Absolutely, they. That, does, I know they made a couple of new signings. They lost a couple of players due to the fact that they were they did so well in Europe. But Tim Clancy mentioned last week at, at post match that it was as if they didn't respect St. Pat's um, last week. And and again last night, you you wouldn't in the first half you wouldn't have known who was playing Europa Conference League football last season. Pat's put it up to them. They were really good, strong defensively. I think captain on the night, Joe Redmond, was absolutely superb. The youngest captain ever to, to captain and Pat's in Europe, um, led by example, Tom Gravazzi and Harry Brockbank, either side of him. Harry is just brought in from um, from USL in, in, in America. He spent time at Bolton Wanderers. His first taste of European football. And 
most of these players, I think it was eight players last week made their European debut out of the 11 that started and shows, shows the lack of experience. They've played a new formation now as well. They've played with wing backs and a box in midfield, which Tim Clancy hadn't used all season. So even Tim deserves huge credit with the risks that he made in this game over the course of the two legs. And they fully deserve their win over the course of, of the of the two two games. The penalties cut Blanny more nervy. Uh, for anyone who didn't see it, two penalties each are missed within the five. Remen then puts away his penalty, and it's all set up then for potentially continuing on the sudden death. And the Muir penalty taker skies it over the crossbar. Pats go through huge relief. Um, do I have to commentate on that? Um, as a former Pats player, kind of an easy last night. No, and, and you're doing it from, you know, obviously, we weren't in Slovenia as well, so it was difficult to kind of grasp the atmosphere at the ground when, when you're actually not there yourself. But, yeah, it, 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 I was very confident with the penalties that were going that, that St. Pat's were going to take. The Pat's over the years have a very good record. I remember playing in a League Cup um, competition in 2015, and the, we, we won the penalty shootouts in quarterfinals, semifinals, and finals. Obviously, Pat's won the the FAI Cup last year against Bohemians on penalties as well. And um, although this was the first taste of penalties in Europe for Pats, I still had great faith in, in the players that were going to come up. I I, I, pick, I selected four out of the five pre, uh, pre-penalty pre shootouts, so I was close to getting the five right that Tim had selected. But um, yeah, just wonderful penalties. And um, like, as I said, with the, with, with the Mura ones, a player who missed Ty Sipo and uh, skied it over the bar. But, He's probably the unfortunate one because three or four before him had very, very close to going over the bar as well. Very surprisingly, all the Mura uh, spot kicks were went high into the goal. And something that you don't, wouldn't usually see in a penalty shootout because you're taking a huge risk um, letting the ball come off the ground. But St. Pat's did the, did the job and uh, Joe and I made some crucial saves, as I said, in, in the game itself, but also, importantly, in the penalty shootout. And to do it away from home to go to penalties, win it that way, it obviously gives you a hell of a lot of confidence now going into the next round. Yeah, absolutely. And it doesn't, again, you're just going to make that step up, up against CSKA Sofia with vast experience, international experience, South American players that are that are fantastic. Usado, Garces, two Brazilians that are going to be the, the talking points possibly. You have um, uh, Dom, Domov as well. He's going to, He's a Bulgarian international so creative midfielder. So yeah, you're going to be coming up against a, a, a superior, a more superior team to Mura. But as you say, Ashling, it's it's all about confidence going into these games, and they'll be completely full of it. Now they do have an FAI Cup game against Waterford on Sunday. It'll be interesting to see what team selection Tim picks for that game. But these players have earned the right to play in this game against CSK or Sofia. And they're so young. The likes of Adam O'Reilly, 21 years of age, on loan from Preston, who was magnificent yesterday in the centre of the park. Over the two games, he was brilliant. You have Chris Forrester, who can do anything with a football. The technique that he shows in in in, in parts of the pitch where you're, you're nearly afraid to receive the ball, he's, he's, he's exceptional. And then you have 34-year-old Owen Doyle up front, who's come home from, from England to experience European football again. And uh, his selfless running and and movement was was something to behold last night as well. So they have nothing to fear. They have absolutely nothing to fear, nothing to prove either. Um, they'll be the un- complete underdogs in this game, but they but they have earned the right now, and hopefully they can do themselves justice. Yeah, players like Owen Doyle are so important. We were talking about Aidan Keena coming back to Sligo a little bit earlier on the programme that they bring that experience of playing at a reasonably high level and then come back in. And I remember Owen Doyle was sitting here with in studio with us on a Saturday here in OTB at the start of the season and we're asking him about, you know, coming back, having had a good few years in the lower uh, leagues in England recently and the fact that he had other options but decided to come to St. Pat's. And he was talking about Europe being a key reason why he signed for the club. I mean, obviously, domestically, you won't do well and Pat's won't want to surrender the FAI Cup this weekend and will won't do well in the league but for attracting players in a good run in Europe quite aside from the financial benefits is huge for a club absolutely massive and you mentioned Owen Doyle there and sometimes players that come back from England at his age will get a reputation of just finishing off your career and and not in it you're just in it for us to kind of top up your 
top up your money before you, the end of your career. But that's far from what Owen Doyle has done. He could have signed a, a, a big deal at Shamrock Rovers as well, turned that down. He worked with Tim Clancy when the both of them played at Hibernian and they have a wonderful relationship both on and off the pitch. So um, he signed for the right reasons. As he said, European football is huge. He hadn't experienced it in over a decade since he's been with Sligo Rovers as well. So um, for him to come back and um, play in Inchicore, and he's a, certainly a, a fan favourite already. He's already scored 10 league goals this season. Um, he would probably admit himself he probably should have more. But um, yeah, a, a brilliant player to have around the dressing room. And he's full of positivity with those young players. And it's needed because there is a, a lack of experience in the squad as well. Yeah, it's a good response from Pats too. When you consider being rocked after the cup final, Steve O'Donnell goes to Dundalk. It brings Robbie Benson with him, one of Pat's most important players. Okay, Pat's were able to hold on to some of the really important ones, like Chris Forrester, to be around the squad. But Pat's had to rebuild and rebuild on the back of success, which is never the easiest thing to do. You know, you're on the high of having had a good season, and next thing, your coach and one of your best players is ripped away. Your coach, your best players, your assistant manager, um, and two or three more players, well, John Mountney, Sam Bone, just mm-hmm. to name a few as well. So they they were ripped apart. Um, and the, the, it's crazy when you look at last night's performance because there was only one player that started la- two players that started last night that started the cup final a little over eight months ago so it just shows to sh- goes to show the job that Tim Clancy has done and, and they hired him very very quickly they knew Gareth Kelleher the, 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 the owner of St. Patsy knew who he wanted went after him in the right in the right way you could say and um, got his man and, and um, yeah, they, they they started okay, and then they kind of dipped a little bit um, in league form. But the European spell now has just shot, just shown what what this squad is capable of. And as I said, the the recruitment has been key because they lost, as you say, so many good players, good influential, experienced players. And holding on to Chris Forrester was key. But the likes of Owen Doyle coming in, bringing in Adam O'Reilly, like I mentioned, Barry Cotter was a wonderful signing on loan from Shamrock Rovers for the European campaign. But I think. With with Yaros in goal last season, he was the he was, everybody was saying that you cannot replace him when he went back to Liverpool. But they brought in Joseph Anang, and a lot of a lot of Pats fans are saying that he's even better than, than Miroslav Yaros. So it's um that's a that's a huge compliment to Joseph Anang, but he's been absolutely superb. Yeah, it's exciting times. And these European nights, like it's it's what the players play for. You know, it's, it's such a buzz. And you can feel around the League of Ireland as a whole now that it's great. It's such, it's such a buzz around it. Absolutely, Ashley. And, 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 and the nerd that's in me, like I'm thinking about the coefficient, obviously as well, when it's increasing, when you have three fantastic victories during the week, which is great for Irish football. You have Shamrock Rovers who had a magnificent result against Ludogrets, albeit they went out. It's just unfortunate the way their first leg had gone and then Sligo Rovers wonderful performance both home and away um, to Motherwell and then obviously St. Pat's beat in Murray yesterday it's it's it's, it's just so good to see three um, SSE or Tristy League teams still in Europe going into August it's something that we don't see regularly enough um, hopefully Shamrock Rovers can can push on and, and get to a group stage as I, if I'm being honest I think it's beyond Sligo and St. Pat's given the 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 opposition that they're going to be facing um, over the next couple of weeks. But having said that, th- these guys have nothing to fear now. They have, they've they showed what they can do. They've earned the, a lot of money for it. And best of luck to them now um, in the coming weeks. Yeah, I think I saw on the coefficients, there's two countries outside the top 30 in Europe who've got multiple teams left in Europe at this stage, Malta and the Republic of Ireland. So just goes to show the achievement. I think the coefficient is going inside the top 40 uh, based on the results from last night and also uh, Shamrock Rovers getting a positive result against Ludogorets too. Um, that's the thing as well, Conan. We were saying this to some of the Sligo guys earlier. Um, particularly... I think the League of Ireland gets in behind teams and even rival clubs when they have a run in Europe. And this week has been a bit of a shot in the arm for the league, getting such great results. Absolutely, yeah. We, we saw it last year when, when Bowes went on their run and their, their support that they received when they were playing at the Aviva Stadium, getting 30,000 plus fans going in there. And it was it was wonderful to see. And now, as a, a former professional footballer of only just a few years, you just get so jealous of these of these occasions now, when the when the teams are doing so well. Because when I was playing, they weren't doing as good, but my teams weren't doing as good. But um, yeah. But as I said, with Shamrock Rovers, I think that the squad that they have, 
um, the depth of the squad that they have, they have a, re- a real chance of going of going forward. Obviously, they brought in Daniel Cleary from St. Johnson. Simon Power has come in as well from Harrogate Town in League Two, formerly of Norwich. Played in the in the league with UCD and Cabinteely before he went abroad. Uh, before he went away. So they, he, they've strengthened as well, which they needed to. I still do think that they need a, a striker that can score 20 plus goals per se, um, a season. Um, but with Sligo Rovers as well, I'm just so impressed with John Russell since he's come in, Will, if I'm being completely mm-hmm. honest. And even with his team selections, leaving off two international players um, in Nando Pinecker and Frank Levac and replacing them, not replacing them, but Shane Blaney and, or Blaney Shane, whatever way you want to say it. Um, um, what a wonderful free kick in the first couple of minutes to to settle the nerves and very very complete performance from them gave Motherwell no no opportunity to score and then obviously with St Pat's as well as I said I think recruitment has been key with with the three teams over the last number of months and um, it just goes to show what, what recruitment what good recruitment can do signing the right players and signing the right personalities. Well, look, I'm sure it was enjoyable doing the game from Tube last night, but hopefully you and Oshin Langan can be flown out to Sofia for the first leg of this third round qualifier. Conan, thanks for being so good with your time this morning. No problem at all, Will. Thanks.